Elizabeth and I'm a certified personal trainer and nutritionist and today I have self-defense training. I'm going to share with you some tips and some demonstrations. So ideally um, you would practice self-defense training in your civilian clothes. Uh, I'm in my civilian clothes. I'm not wearing shoes. I do not wear shoes in my house. I try not to. Um, but this is important as silly as it sounds to practice self-defense in other clothing besides your training gear because it is unlikely that when you are attacked you'll be wearing your training gear. So you want to practice in different uh, variations of your standard clothing. So today we're going to go over some important uh, qualities or physical, physical qualities when it comes to self-defense training, um, some aspects that are just important in general. I'm going to go over some different strikes and some major knockout points in the body and why they're effective. So that being said, uh, the first thing I'd like to go over are just some important things. So number one is a calm mind and this is probably going to be your best defense because it, you need to not worry. When you're frantic, it's hard to think clearly and uh, you want to have the best and most hopeful outcome in your mind no matter how desperate your situation seems. Because if you automatically tell yourself, I'm going to die in your uh, unfortunate circumstance, you won't strive to overcome it and you don't want to do that. And on top of that, um, when you're fighting, your oxygen levels are depleted, which uh, if you have good endurance, it doesn't affect your mind so much, but if you are uh, completely new, you will become winded and it will be harder to think. So you don't want to um, deplete your thinking capabilities more quickly by panicking. That's a waste of thought. Also, you don't want to fear dying, and I know that sounds uh, easier said than done, but unfortunately we all face death at some point in our life, and if you just accept the fact that it might come to you, then uh, that won't be on your mind. Now, I would like to go over some good aspects of good uh, physical traits, rather, for self-defense or fighting. And that's going to be endurance, and this is your ability to exercise or to fight for long periods of time. And this is achieved uh, by continuous practice. And um, the next thing we have is power. And a lot of people think that if you're just big, that you'll have a lot of power. And even though size uh, has to do with power, because power is mass times acceleration, um, what is even more important is your body synchronization, meaning that uh, you controlling your body and getting it to the power when you get to someone. Uh, having control over your body is going to help you get the most power. And we have flexibility, and this is useful because it help, helps to increase speed, and it also helps you to get a better range of motion. And then there is speed itself. This is the ability to execute moves quickly and rebounding with less time, meaning that if you kick, you come back and get right back into it. And then we have balance, and this is to help you not get knocked off your feet. So with balance, um, it's important to be well grounded. So when you're in your fighting stance, you want your knees slightly bent. You want to think with your mind about having all four corners of your feet placed firmly on the floor and not wanting to be uprooted. So the four corners of your feet are going to be the two front points and the two back points here. And you want to feel them on the ground at all times. Then, also on top of that, when you take your limbs away from your body, you want to have good core strength because this will also help you to keep your balance. So, the next thing I have is uh, the best strikes. And those are going to be elbows um, and knees. So the knee is like the king of kicks. It's often banned in tournaments for martial arts. And it's because it can offer some really devastating blows. So some forms of knee strikes are going to be the forward knee and the round knee. And they are useful because with close contact, or uh, being close to someone you're fighting with, you're able to get more power in and therefore hit harder than you would from a long distance. But long distance strikes are very good too, and I'm going to get into that. 
The next thing is that your elbow is useful because even though we fight with fists or you see boxers do it, um, the fist can break or the hand can break easily. And so the elbow gives a good surface area for striking and again close to the body and able to cause a more devastating blow. So now I'd like to go into the fist because I had just mentioned it. When you make a fist, you bring your thumb on the outside. Your fingers are folded in and sometimes people um, recommend like sticking your middle finger out a little or your index finger, but I don't recommend that because those fingers will break. And so when you strike, you rotate your fist and you bring it back. Now, when you clench your fist, your bones kind of squeeze together like a corset, making them more durable than if your hand was open. Studies have shown that a palm strike and a fist can supply the same amount of power. However, a fist is more painful because it, the little bones here in your knuckles, they're sharp. So you can compare it to something like a palm strike being like stepped on with a boot and a fist like being stomped on with a heel. All of the power is generated in a small point and so it hurts a lot more. You'll notice that boxers generally wrap their hands and wear gloves to prevent uh, having breaks, but they still get broken, which is why the fist is not always useful. And on top of that, when you strike, uh, when you hit a person, you're generally hitting soft tissue, which, which helps, but uh, they're not uh, a first choice, per se, when it comes to strikes. Then the next thing are different kicks. And so the most powerful kicks are going to be side kicks and front kicks. And um, any lower hit, like meaning that the lower you hit on the body, is going to be one that you can generate more power in. The higher up you go, the less power you can use because some of your power is taken away uh, with your flexibility and getting your leg away from you. So the good thing about this, though, that I forgot to mention, is precision. So um, we are predators. If you look at creatures, any creature with forward-facing eyes or two eyes in the front, uh, they're a predator. And anything with eyes on its side, like a deer, is a prey. So we are predators, and um, we do have natural self-defense abilities. And so with the fist, precision, or knowing exactly where you're going to strike is one of those things. So now I'm going to get into some major knockout points. So even if you don't have the best fighting abilities, if you know where to hit, uh, that's where you can really do some damage. So some ma major knockout points are going to be the head, and you can usually get the head with a fist or with a round kick or axe kick. And this is going to shock the brain, and it shuts down functions of the nervous system. And even if you just get the jaw, you, you, the person will still experience a rebound effect, meaning that it'll throw them off center. So, um, as far as like fighting skills go, to me personally, and this is going to offend some people, I think that karate and kickboxing are ideal. Some fighting styles, uh, though uh, beautiful or artistic, may not be super practical for fighting. Next, we have the carotid artery in the neck. This is uh, the big vein in your neck, and sometimes you can see it if you turn your head. And if you strike it, it can lead to a drop in your blood pressure and heart rate. And that will cause a loss in consciousness, and sometimes death, even a light strike, can do that. The next part of the body we have is the groin and pelvic area, which is going to be, for men, their prize, and for women, also in this lower part of the body. And it is effective because of your ability to supply a powerful low strike to the body. But I believe that if someone's going to attack you and they're well prepared, they might wear a cup. And so it's not always the best place to choose. Or it wouldn't be my first place to choose to hit. Then we have the solar and cardio plexus, which is going to be kind of like up here in your mid part of your ribs where you can feel the squishiness and where your heart is in the center or the breastbone. And so this um, can be struck 
well with a side kick or a palm or fist strike. And if uh, you hit powerfully enough, you can achieve a knockout. And if you don't hit powerfully enough, you can at least sustain knocking the wind out of your opponent. And then next we have the liver and kidneys. And so you can pick any of them, and they're located in the lower side portions of the body. And you can easily strike them with a round kick. Now I'm going to go over all these moves because I know that is not really a demonstration of it. So uh, it can, even without a knockout, uh, weaken someone's stamina and willpower. And so uh, if you can overcome your opponent's mind, that will help you a great deal. And then we have the brachial plexus, which is kind of along the lower sides of the neck. And they're vulnerable to axe kicks and can result in serious clavicle bone damage. The clavicle bone is this bone here along your chest or your collarbone is its slang term. So um, some good thing about long range attacks are that they push the opponent back. So even if you can't uh, issue a devastating blow, you can at least buy yourself time and get them away from you. So now I'm going to go over some different moves. And so the first thing is your stance. Now with different fighting styles, you have a different stance. So what is important is that you kind of try to protect your face and vulnerable regions like your chest, neck, head, all that. And so for boxers, you would bring your arms up close. So small would be the surface between your arms, your forearms here. You don't want anyone's hand to fit through it. So you'd be blocking your face, you would still be able to see, and they would not be able to get their hand through. For sometimes for martial arts, they bring one hand away and one hand up to protect their face. So one's trying to protect the body and one not. But any, any way you choose to do it, as long as you have keeping your face and uh, vulnerable areas protected, uh, that's going to be good enough. You don't have to be a professional fighter to defend yourself. And if you have trouble helping yourself block your face, if you practice, you can practice by holding onto your shirt to remind yourself to keep your hands up. Or you can hold a piece of paper under your arm to help keep your arms locked in and help you to remember to keep your hands up that way until you get used to it and it becomes second nature. Now I'm going to show you basic strikes. So you have your jab, rotate fist, cross, elbow. You turn your body when you strike with your elbow. This helps it to bring your body weight behind it and causes the hit to be more devastating. Then we have hook, which is also being led from the body and also helps give good power. Um, it has a better range of motion than an elbow per se. Uh, and it can also help you to hit other parts of the body rather than uh, front facing hits. And then we also have uppercuts. And this can hit underneath the chin or in the head area or if you, you know, get low, you can strike other parts of the body as well. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we have knee strikes and they are the king of kicks because of how devastating they can be. So you can grab your opponent and drive them into your knee or you can just bring in your knee so they're very useful you can come around or forward and then we have various types of kicks so one of the most powerful ones is going to be a front kick and with different martial arts they look differently so you can either push with the, the flat of your foot uh, if you're trying to you know push somebody away you can strike with the top surface of your foot or shin, uh, depending on where you kick. So if you were going for like a groin strike, um, you, that would be useful. Another thing that I'd like to mention um, is, now I've lost it, I'll come back to it. So the next thing that we have is side kick, and this is another powerful one. Um, because not only does it have a variation of the height you can hit, so you can go low, you can go mid, and you can even use it for high. But as I said earlier, the higher you go, the less power you might have. And it is also one of the more powerful ones. It's also very useful for keeping people away. Um, anytime. So the difference between a front and rear leg kick is a front leg is going to be quicker to get to your opponent, but it's not going to have the same power. 
as the rear leg. The rear leg takes longer to get to the person, but uh, in the time that it takes to get there, you can generate more power in your strike. So then we have a round kick, and it comes around the bar body. It is an, it's classified as an arc kick, so meaning that it forms like an arc. So arc kicks are going to be round kicks and crescent kicks, and they don't generate the most power, uh, but they can be useful for getting different parts of the body and also throwing an opponent off because it's uh, not always easy to tell when those type of strikes are coming towards you. So from your fighter stance, you come around and kick up, and depending on where you kick depends on uh, the target area it's going to go. Obviously, you're in control of that, though. So uh, it's important to also practice precision when fighting. So then we have an axe kick, and the axe kick comes up, but the devastating part of it is when it drops back down. So you start with your kick up, and then you bring your heel down. And the heel is a useful instrument of the foot that can um, cause pain, as I had mentioned earlier with the knuckles, because of all your power being generated in that one area, it can cause a pretty devastating blow. Another important part of the foot is the blade part of the foot, or the side, and it can be used for stomping. You can do a regular stomp. So uh, that concludes our self-defense training, and hopefully you enjoy this video. Please check out more of my other videos on YouTube under Wellness by Elizabeth, and like, subscribe, and share.